Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. I truly appreciate it. If you do get time, please drop down in the description and leave a donation if possible to help keep these DIYs coming or buy a shirt or possibly a sticker. Okay, enough about that. Uh, today, we're going to do part two of the VW engine top end rebuilt. Now, as I said before, if you missed the first part, it's a 1600 dual port. It's the same one in a Beetle. The only differ is this is out of a VW thing. So the cooling tins are slightly different on the bottom and the front. That's it. Otherwise, it's the same motor. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do part two today. And we will continue until this is done. Uh, I do get into detail and show close up. So please don't fast forward through. Because what I've been having happening is I'm showing important tips. And some folks will watch a video and say, could you tell me how to do plan A? And I'm like, it was in the video. Well, I fast forwarded through. Please don't do that. I, I get into depth for a reason. So enjoy the video. Let's get started. Hopefully there's not a humming in the background. I have my heater running, which sometimes can be a little noisy, but it's a little bit cold in here. So anyhow, if you noticed a few parts back on, I didn't want water getting into there or sludge. Uh, the owner dropped by and grabbed it and went and pressure washed it. So did it come out real clean? Not real clean, but it got the heavy stuff off and that's what I needed out of my way. So we'll go ahead and remove those. I'll probably even do it off camera. I did replace the stud on the alternator stand that was uh, stripped out. <clears throat> now, uh, one thing I did want to show you like I said, this is a 1600 dual port. Same motor for the Beetle, the Thing, blah, blah, blah. However, there's just a little bit of a difference on the tins in the front, and we will get on to that. So let's start removing the rest of the cooling tins, and then start pulling these heads off. And just like we did before, a little bit of wire brush activity here. Okay, because you want to clean that rust up that is around the screw heads so that can penetrate okay and i'll do the other side real quick here give me a second now as you noticed if you were tuned in for part one i don't even try to put a screwdriver on those okay i like to do vice grips and break them loose it just is a little easier with the screwdriver it's a real pain in the butt so i do it this way let's bring you up close then we just break them loose. That one broke loose a little easier than I thought it was going to. Okay, well, you know what? That one was loose. I don't know why. Let's take them off real quick. I don't know what the deal was with those. Now, I am going to have to get that oil cooler out of the way, though. <coughs> I don't think I can sneak the tin out, although I should be able to. So, watch you don't drop nothing down in your intake ports. Take little pieces of cloth. I'm pulling the heads, though if you weren't, because you don't want to drop something down inside. Alrighty. And we have them on the front here and on the back. So let's get to those next. We're going to go ahead, give these a spray. Okay, and there's two around the back. I'll show you when I'm loosening them. I already hit them with a little wire brush. This looks bent up. I'm going to bend this back down a little. There we go. Alrighty. Up, oh, let me get my longer vice grips. Somebody was on these. Okay, well, good for me. Let's check the back. And you have two around the back. I'm gonna try to put the screwdriver on first because it looks like somebody well, of course not so I tried to use the screwdriver that time and they were tight okay that loosened it up right away I love doing a vice grip one I think it's much easier than stripping the heads out with the screwdriver and that loosened up let me get it a little bit more I didn't like how it felt Okay, and make sure when you're spraying them with PB Blast that you also spray underneath where the threads are. So, 
let's get that off of there. All right, I slid this down for a reason because this piece here, look how that goes so you remember. But don't worry about it because what I am going to do is a cooling tin installation video when we're putting this back together so you know where all the cooling tins go. Like that, huh? All right, let's see how bad this fights with me. Whoa, that was treacherous. That one came off pretty easy, didn't it? Pretty impressed, aren't you? Okay, let's go to the other side. Let me see. I know I'm probably wasting my time. Oh, no, it came loose. Okay. That's your heater pipe, preheat pipe. Everybody calls them something different. Here's the other front piece that goes in there. Okay. Don't get these mixed up. Although you can watch my video and know what's up anyhow. So you're in luck. Okay. I already so let get these off. Come on. There you go. Oh, might have a stubborn one here, possibly. Uh-oh, our first stubborn one. We're not reusing these heads, so if it breaks, I'm not going to get upset. But most of you are going to oh, be using yours over. And I got it. Just a little patience. That's all it takes. A little patience. Something I do have some days. Some days not as much. That one's being rough the whole way out. Huh. I can tell that I don't want to put a screwdriver on it yet just by how it feels. Now you're going to have that on some of them. But what you are going to do is once you go to reinstall is wire wheel the threads really good. Just a little little titch of anti-seize. Don't go crazy. And the next time, they'll come right out. But I still highly advise stainless steel or, you know, the bolt heads. You can do 10 millimeter bolt heads, which I highly recommend. Oh, let me get in your way a minute here. Oh, come on. Oh, you can even hear it creaking. A little bit of creaking. Wow. All right, I'll speed it up. Sit tight. So that one broke off. Like I said, we're not reusing these heads. Off comes the tin. So this one actually would need drilled, extracted, retapped, what have you, but these heads aren't no good anyhow. So, okay, let's keep rolling. Now, I have already sprayed these and cleaned them up. I'm spraying them one more time. I'll try a screwdriver, but I don't think that's going to work. Not that easy. Of course not. No problem. Now, I'm hoping these don't break. Because that will be upsetting. So let's, let's snap these on there nice and tight. There we go. Whew, good. I didn't want that to break. That's the block. Let's go to the other side. You've got to try to get in here, which isn't easy. I'm going to snap them on this way. So you're going to only be able to see so much. But you know what I'm doing, so... Give me a second here. Oh, and we got it loose. Very nice. That's a nice. All right. You don't want to break them off in the block. That's the ignorant ones that do that. There we 
we go. That's why it's worthwhile brushing the uh, area and then the PB blast because it gets inside there where the rust is not holding it back. A little bit different there. We're going to take this off. Okay. Now, if you recall, we had already pre-treated these, but we're going to spray them again. We did that last week. Okay. We wire brushed the areas real good and pre-treated them. So, let's see if pre-treating helped. Of course, that one did. This one's going to be hard to get to. Let me pull that front nose off first. So let's take this front piece off here, okay? And what that is, as you're going to notice here, is these two bolts remind you of the mustache bar on a, a Volkswagen bus, right? So that's the only difference with this block. Otherwise, it's all Volkswagen Beetle, same thing. Let's pop this off first. That's a 17 millimeter. Okay, let's get the other one. Now again, I did wire brush around these bolts and hit them with PB Blast. Yes, I did repeat myself. 14 millimeter. Oh. Come on. Okay, simple bracket. Let's get okay. our last piece of tin off. Let's turn the engine. Now, if you recall, I already pre-treated the ones and wire wheeled them going into the block because you do not want to break them off in the block. But I'm sure you know that. So this one's coming out fine. One more to go. I'm going to get the vice grips on this one. Oh, please turn. Uh-oh. Here we go. This is the one you do not want to break. It's right into the engine block. Okay, it's turning. Very stiff. Stop. Okay. With the magic of film, we're going to let that sit for about 15 minutes. Be right back. Okay. Cross your fingers. I'm going back and forth real gently. Okay. I'm going to spray it again. I'm trying to get up behind the bolt too, where the threads are up inside. Because I'm trying like heck for this not to break. And when I do get it out, I'll run a tap down through it to clean it up. Uh-oh. And it broke. Wonderful. Let's remove our tin out of the way. This is bad. I don't like when this happens. I'll show you up close. I tried everything I could to get that not to break. I guess you've seen that, but it did break. So I'll go ahead and try to see what I can do to drill this out and extract it and run a tap through it. Nothing else broke but that one. The one that I didn't want it to break, but it happens. Not much I can do right this second. So let's move forward to pull the valve cover off of this side. Well, wow, these are stiff. I'm gonna have to uh, ugh. I'm gonna have to take the uh, wires out and clean up in there because these aren't uh, moving very nice. So we'll take them out and clean them up for the new heads so that they swivel nicely. All right, grab a 13 millimeter 
and let's pull off rocker arms there we go now don't lose your nuts and washers okay I throw them in a valve cover so I don't lose them alrighty don't forget the little washer okay remove your rocker arm Okay, now we're going to do something with these push rods. <clears throat> Let me get set up here for that. One thing you're going to want to do if you're reusing the push rods like he wants me to do on this one, okay, is make a box. I wrote flywheel end and dizzy end distributor. Punch four holes. You're going to line your push rods up so that they go back in the same spot. So, we are going to, we're going to go ahead, take your rear one closest to the flywheel, and there's going to be some oil running out of them. And you want even the end to stay closest to you sticking up, so that's how you put them back in, okay? So you're going to do this so you don't have to worry about putting them in the same spot or they roll around on the workbench and then you get confused on what was what. So I'm sure most of you know this, but if you're new, there, there's a great invention. Time to remove the head. Now, if you're just replacing oil cooler sills, you don't have to remove the head. However, this is what we're doing regardless because we're doing a top end rebuild. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight 15 millimeter nuts to pull the head. So let's do that next. And like I said, don't lose your nuts and bolts. I'm going to keep these ones in the valve cover because it's just easier. So make sure the studs don't come out with them. Okay. Uh oh okay no big deal we'll get that okay I fished that out with a magnet and we're going to go ahead and get our washers off of here don't drop them like I did fill these holes with some rags if you need to come on get off there there we go. And the valve cover they go. So I know where they're at. Okay, let's get our top ones out. Okay. That one's right there. You know what? Let me spray them a minute. Just for the heck of it. Can't hurt. I'm going to put that on there so it's on the threads. Okay. Okay. Don't forget your washers and don't lose them. Throw them in your valve cover so you know where they're at. Okay. I say okay a lot. I know. There's our head. Well, push rod tubes are coming along with it. Alrighty. Oh, those are, for original, they're actually in good condition. They really are. Surprisingly, they could probably be cleaned up really nice. Okay. I don't know how hard it'll be to get the pistons off, but we're sure going to find out. But I'm going to pull the head off of the other side first, so let's do that next. Let's spray a little PB on those. They're usually loosened up pretty well. I don't know why uh, these ones were pretty stiff. Who knows? Yeah, they are stiff. 
Okay. Wow. Pretty stiff for sure. Okay, I'm going to leave that on there. And I'll mess with that later because there's no point in you watching me take, I called bailing wire off. Okay, let's get our little valve cover ready to put stuff in. Let me readjust the camera. Take our 13 millimeter. I always break it loose like this first, even though it's pretty strong Milwaukee. Alrighty. And let's put these in our valve cover. It's nice to have America's, you know you ain't got to mess around then figuring out which nut goes to where. Although I know now by just looking at them, how weird is that? Okay. We are going to remove our rocker arm. Don't pull the push rods out yet. Okay. And go ahead. This is the flywheel side. On the box, the flywheel side is at the back, okay? Because I spun the engine stand around. Okay, flywheel end. Okay. And the next one. Whatever you have underneath is going to have oil on it. And I forgot to put plastic on it, so I'll only let guests sit there. I won't sit there. I'm wondering if... Yep. That would come off that easy. It did. Okay. So now we have our pistons loose. I might try something here real quick. Oop, I got oil spilling everywhere again. Next, we have to remove the pistons. So what there is is snap rings in here. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and start the process of removing them. So I have this one turned first. Remember, make sure your distributor is in before you start turning stuff around. Okay. But let's go ahead, let's remove the snap ring first. So get your favorite pair of needle nose. Okay, let me see how close in I can get you. Hopefully that's clear. I can't tell. Sometimes when you zoom in, it's not as clear. Okay, and you're going to take that out. All right, very easy to do. Now when you buy new pistons, they should come with it. All right. So I know this isn't as great here for lighting, but we're taking the other snap ring in that flew across the garage. And there you go. Now I'm going to see if this gets tough, I'll do it a different way. But I want to knock the wrist pins out. And here they come. Okay. If in fact it was real hard to do, you wouldn't want to be screwing around and mess up your crank, but these ones are sliding out pretty easy. So let me go up and speed up the film slightly while I'm doing this. Now, as you see, it came out very easy. If you have to pound on it really hard, let's not mess up the crank, okay? As soon as you push this so far, just pull your socket out and it will come off. As you can see, it goes right on the connecting rod like that. Okay, let's spin the crank slightly so that we can position the next piston to get to much easier, just like that. Now we are going to go ahead. Let me see here. Try not to get in the way of the camera. Wait, I want to do something. Give me a second. I plugged all the holes. I better plug this one just in case. We don't want nothing in the block. All right, try again. I know you probably can't see that. Give me a second. Okay. And the other side, you already know what it looks like, so I'm just going to pop it out. There we go. And let's try to knock this out.
I didn't even have to hit it hard, so that's a bonus. Like I said, if it's too hard, don't do it this way. Okay. Oh, a little bit more. I didn't push it far enough. There we go. That definitely is far enough there. Okay. Zoink. And that side is all done. Now we're going to have to clean everything up. So, okay. Now we are going to, whoops, pull the piston jugs. And I figured that was going to give me trouble. And remember, we're not keeping these. So I'm going to be tapping with the rubber mallet on them. Come on. Almost. There we go. These don't look bad, actually. Oh, let's see what this one does here. These really don't look that bad. That's why I was hitting them easy with the rubber mallet so we didn't break any of the uh, shims. Ah, cooling fins, not shims. Dum dum. Okay, time to get the pistons off. Let's take a rag and get in here. And what we are going to do when we're done there is get this oil cooler out of the way. Very easy to do. Oops. Forgot about our cooling fin between the pistons underneath. Okay. Needle nose on the snap ring. Let's get the inside snap ring. You already know the deal. I'm not going to move the camera over here just for one little thing. Let's do the tap tap. If it gets hard, we'll stop. Nope. Right out. And once again, I didn't do it far enough. There we go. There we go. Okay. These actually look pretty good. He might want to reuse them. Okay. Let's turn our crank because our distributor is still in place. Okay. And, whoop, wait a minute. I'm telling you it's to do certain things and then I don't. Come on, get in there. Just don't want to be dropping stuff inside the motor. That won't be very much fun. There we go. And right there. There. Nothing can make it inside. Let's get our snap ring. Ooh. Okay, let me grab the other one here. You already know what it looks like. We'll tap this out and get ready to do the oil cooler. Okay, that's it. Oh, I wish putting it together was this easy, but a little bit more work involved in that. And that's what we're going to go. You over. have three connections on the oil cooler. You have two here. See where that's at? Okay. And you have one there. Okay. That's all that's holding it on. And you're going to get to see how the seals are. Okay. Because I'm going to show you there's three different seals. All right. Hang tight. You are going to need a 13 millimeter. Now, if in fact you're doing this without pulling the pistons and heads and everything, you're going to use a wrench, okay? And I can do that. It's not a big deal to use a wrench. But when everything is apart, oops, let me turn that. 
Why are you giving me trouble? Hmm, that was weird. Uh, where was I at? Sorry. When you have the heads and jugs off, you can come up underneath with an extension. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, back up. You were too close. Looking over my shoulder like that. Okay, we're going to cover this a minute just so we have nothing going inside the engine when we pull these nuts. Okay, so I know you know what I'm doing there. I'm spinning nut and washer off. Don't move that rag. Even tilt the engine the other way if you want to. I have it tilted so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And there's my washer and my nut. Oil cooler seals oftentimes will leak down through here and come to the front of the car. And some people think it's the oil pressure switch. And oftentimes it's not. It's usually the oil cooler. And no big deal. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt to do them. It's not easy. But it's not terrible. I've seen tougher things on cars. Those two are off. We have a 13 on the top. Okay. And a washer. I need a magnet. And let me reposition this camera before we take it off. Okay, so we're now going to pull it off. Just lift up on it. I had to set here. I didn't know if oil would come out. And let's have a little education. On your oil cooler, you have three seals. Okay, this is where you're used to seeing it. Okay, you have one and two, which bolt to the block. And when you loosen these two 10 millimeter bolts off, this comes apart and then you have a seal. Okay, so we'll do this together. So no worries about it. I probably shouldn't even brought that up yet. So one thing I wanted to show that I completely forgot about because I'm not used to thing motors is there is another bracket on the bottom that hooks to the tins. Okay, and the only thing you have is a bolt there and a bolt there. It's actually the bottom of the engine case. So that needs to come off. It's not a big deal, but I did want to show it. And we'll go over it more when we're putting it back together. Okay, so now we've got it stripped down to where we need it to accept the new jugs, the new pistons, etc., etc. Uh, I'm going to pull all this back off the top of it. We're going to go ahead and clean the block up a little bit better. Uh, he's not asking for show quality, okay? But we do want to... I thought my microphone fell. Uh, but we do want to clean it up, you know. I did ask him if he wanted the new oil pump gaskets. He declined on it. So if you go, why didn't you pull that? Because I was asked not to. So we're going to leave that alone. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put a new rear main seal in or a front seal. Some people like to harass me about that. So a new crankshaft flywheel seal. How's that sound? Uh, and then uh, we'll start assembling everything. So Step by step, I think you'll break it up into two more parts maybe. I can't tell because I'm trying not to make the videos too long. I don't want a five-hour video because you all aren't going to watch it. So, okay, let me close so that up. was part two. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean the block up a little bit better. And I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll do that on a slide here. And we'll get ready next week to do the, uh, I guess, the uh, oil pump seals... We'll slide the pistons on. We'll show how to clock the uh, piston rings. A little bit of everything. And the last section will end up being the cooling tin installation. I'll do that separate. So, okay. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I hope everybody's healthy, happy, and safe with this lovely new year. Let's make it a great new year, okay? Let's be happy no matter what is going on around us. Help one another out, okay? That's what this is all about. Don't be selfish. Don't be on an ego trip. Be, be nice to everybody. I'll see you soon.